I'm just here to watch you die. 47. Finish it. Agent 47's unique brand of slow-paced stealth in an assortment of dense, deadly and deeply varied murder playgrounds has reached a wonderful crescendo in Hitman 3. While it doesn't stray from the killer chord combination developer IO Interactive crafted for 2016's Hitman and continued to use in 2018's Hitman 2, it's abundantly clear here that the studio has well and truly mastered its act. With some of the most surprising and imaginative levels in the series so far, Hitman 3 may feel largely familiar to its two most recent predecessors, but just thinking of the hours upon hours of chaos, carnage and cruel comedy that each of its six outstanding new maps will produce makes me giddy. 37. It's time. This final chapter of IO's World of Assassination trilogy that began with 2016's Hitman might be better thought of as an expansion than a sequel. If you've bounced off Hitman before, particularly in the last five years, know that there's been no big reinvention of the bald bloke's blueprint in Hitman 3. The interface and controls have remained consistent in their stiffness, and the range of uses for your weapons and items aren't drastically different either. Huh? The most notable new toy in Hitman 3 is a camera which can be used to hack or examine switches and items, which is handy but not really a game changer. The true strength of Hitman 3 then is found in its maps. All six of Hitman 3's levels are amongst the strongest of the series, so much so that it's hard to pick a standout favourite. Things get off to a fairly stunning start with 47 parachuting onto the world's tallest building in Dubai and infiltrating its opulent interior, but that high bar is maintained throughout. The follow-up mission is a bit of a nod and a wink to the Beldingford Manor map from Hitman Contracts and takes 47 to a similarly massive UK country manor where one entertainingly ironic route to killing your target involves posing as a detective who's there to solve a murder on the property. Can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, you're wondering about my alibi, Mr. Detective. From there, it's off to a massive German rave for a mission that oozes atmosphere and puts an interesting twist on hunting down your five targets amongst the throngs of sweaty 24-hour party people. This is Montgomery. Is everyone in position? And then to Chongqing, China, where the glow of neon lights, the reflections in the soaked streets, and the trickle of rain down 47's jacket combined for perhaps the most visually impressive mission of the series so far. The next stop is an Argentinian vineyard that reminded me of Blood Money's excellent A Vintage Year map, only vastly bigger. And then the finale is a fabulous surprise unlike any Hitman mission to date, and one which I sincerely hope isn't spoiled for you. It's tricky to speak about these locations in too much detail without ruining the thrill of strolling through them and revealing massive new areas you had no idea existed. But these environments are truly some of the most memorable and remarkable maps IO has ever created. From the intimidating verticality on display while perched on the outside of the highest skyscraper in the world, to the rustic charm of Thornbridge Manor. A hidden door. I'm equally hesitant to reveal the quirky assassination opportunities they contain, but I will say Hitman 3 contains both the funniest and the most complex Hitman kill I've ever played. And at least one of the most dastardly, and there are still many I haven't got to yet. That's Madame Carlyle taken care of. As always, the slow burn thrill of these games comes from planning, patience and hiding in plain sight. The key to success is finding the perfect disguise for exploration, listening and looking for opportunities. We've got no sign of 47 yet, but I'll let you know if something catches my eye. And getting the timing just right to pull off the perfect crime and escape unseen. It's an unapologetically single player experience that rewards rational thinking over rushing although it is flexible enough to cater for both extremes. Those who prefer to follow the multi-layered mini-stories playing out within the levels to make invisible surgical strikes and disappear without a trace. And those who like to improvise and leave behind piles of dead and unconscious men in their underpants. You can get away with all of this because the often hilariously naive AI is still as easy to exploit as ever. Of course, tricking the dopey guards and civilians with unexpected distractions and suspicious items has emerged as such a fundamental part of the puzzle solving in the current Hitman trilogy, and I've actually grown to love these dumb bastards over the years. Oh, yeah. 
These folks won't even blink an eye at a severe-faced stranger who's wearing the clothes of a man they've very recently had a conversation with. Hey there, you can go right in. And while that does rob stealthy victories of believability at times, this kind of suspension of disbelief is simply necessary for Hitman to function. Perfect timing. Your clearance just came through. And as grim as the murder for hire premise seems on the surface, this has always been a cheekily self aware series that relishes in a general degree of silliness and gallows humor. That there will be consequences if word gets out that Madame Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. These great levels are linked together by the conclusion to the limp story arc that kicked off in 2016. While this hackneyed story of competing shadow organizations is unlikely to have Netflix power brokers sprinting to the nearest checkbook, it's nice to have it wrapped after five years, even if it's been entirely inessential to my enjoyment of the levels themselves. Now at least we'll be able to move on to something that's hopefully a bit different. Maybe it's time for a change. Whoa! Oh. The biggest advantage of there not being any revolutionary changes in Hitman 3 is that owners of Hitman and Hitman 2 can carry over their levels and progress to Hitman 3. There's a certain tidiness to rolling the trilogy into a single product that I really like, and I admire IO's commitment to keeping the previous game's content alive like this. On Xbox Series X, this is mostly seamless. As an owner of both previous Hitman games on Xbox One, Hitman 3 was automatically augmented with all the previous maps, although the progression carryover functionality wasn't operational for me at the time of review. The PC situation is hindered somewhat by the shift from Steam to the Epic Game Store, though IO has got on the record that an import feature will be available within weeks. It's also proven to be a little unruly on PlayStation 5. Despite having both previous games installed, Hitman 3 is directing me to further downloads to allow access, neither of which are available at the time of review. The lack of native support on PSVR and PS5 also meant I had to download and install the PS4 version of Hitman 3 alongside the PS5 version, which is a bit of a messy solution, but that's really on Sony rather than IO. For its part, IO provides a free digital copy of the PS4 version to all who buy the PS5 version, so nobody misses out. When you get it up and running, Hitman in VR is worth a dabble if you own a PSVR, though really only to experience its general slapstick goofiness firsthand. You have to play with a DualShock 4 because the move controllers just don't have enough buttons. And while it can generally handle melee attacks, the shooting experience is really quite cumbersome and imprecise as a consequence. The end result is a system that winds up marooned halfway between full motion controls and traditional controls, which I found regularly brain bending and occasionally stomach churning. Get away from me, you creep! There's no denying that getting to access all of Hitman and Hitman 2's levels in VR is incredible value, but it's really not the best way to play. Ah, oh, also you can attack people with a fish. Felt worth a mention. Come in. Anybody there? Oh. Warning. Core shut down. Temperature critical. Rich, rewarding, and highly replayable, Hitman 3 is a superb installment of IO's idiosyncratic but much loved stealth series. The fundamentals haven't changed since 2016, but its collection of outstanding maps makes for a refined, reliable, and robust curtain closer to the current Hitman trilogy. Six maps may sound slim, but each one is huge and designed to be played several times over, and even then it's very unlikely you'll have uncovered all of its creative and surprising assassination opportunities. There really isn't a weak one in the bunch. This barcoded butcher has made a lot of appearances over the past 20 years, but Hitman 3 is definitely one of his best. For more Hitman 3, check out the opening minutes, and for a glimpse of what IO Interactive is up to next, watch the teaser for Project 007. For everything else, stay on IGN.